everybody, welcome to my talk today, which is part of a career series focusing on nurse educator roles. In the future, I'll be looking at nurse researcher roles, specialist nurse, advanced nurse practitioner and senior nurse roles. And as a nurse, I've been registered now for 34 years and I've worked in a range of ed nurse educator roles from being a practice development nurse on a neurology ward where I was teaching one to one at the bedside and supporting staff to a lecturer practitioner where I was delivering master's neuroscience modules in a university and adult nursing degree modules. So hopefully I can give you lots of tips. Do check out my YouTube channel, Support and Career Development for Nurses, for more free videos. So the two questions I am often asked by staff is, what do nurse educators do and how do I become a nurse educator? Oops. First thing to say is, that there are a wide variety of roles, job descriptions and personal specifications and pay bands. When you look on NHS jobs, for example, you'll see this vast variety. And you may want to work as a nurse in a clinical setting locally, or you might want to work in for a training, skills development and training for an institution where you're covering a larger area. You might want to work in a university or as a health advisor, and I'll discuss some of these roles. But um, if you are interested, there's two references that are interesting looking at standardisation of nurse education roles. And Sprinks in, two, in 2015 called for more support and standardising. Um, they found that there was 35 variations of the clinical nurse educator role. And there are these inconsistencies across job descriptions. So somebody as a clinical nurse educator in Oxford, for example, may be doing something different to somebody in Newcastle. And there's no national frameworks or career progression pathways in the UK currently. And this is May 2022. In 2021, Ariel Lenarda and I, along with the divisional team, conducted a service improvement project to reduce variations in clinical nurse educator roles. And we set out to define standardise and um, to define the academic requirements and clear progression career pathways. So if you're interested, those references are at the end of the talk. So when we're looking at different types of roles, I mentioned the clinical educator role, which would be in a clinical, local clinical area. And some of the titles might be clinical nurse educator, practice development nurse, clinical educator, etc. These roles are usually employed by NHS trusts and institutions and they're, so they're not university posts and the aim is to ensure staff receive essential training and support in clinical practice so they're led by service delivery needs. So when I was a practice development nurse I worked really closely with line managers, local managers who set the parameters and the goals for the role. So it might be that if a staff member was struggling, I would be expected to work one to one with them to help develop their confidence and skills. I might provide group education and look at certain training days and study days for different groups of staff, providing this network of support. And it may include responsibilities for student welcomes or newly registered nurses or staff inductions and sign off for proficiencies for certain staff groups. So um, for support workers, training, nursing associates, newly registered nurses, comp band five competences. You might sign off care certificate or NVQ, national vocational qualifications for nursing assistants. Reviewing induction packs and the role is really multifaceted. Promoting evidence-based practice was something that many is something that many managers utilise the clinical nurse educator role because you're a role model and you may be asked to link to clinical governance work. So, for example, if falls went up in an area that there was more falls for some reason, you may be asked to do some teaching on falls prevention. So the, the role is you're constantly creating and developing teaching programmes to meet staff needs. And that's something that I really enjoyed about education. 
um, and sometimes acting as a link between the university and the clinical setting. So you may be responsible for allocating supervisors and keeping an eye on students. Um, and often scoping reviews, you may be asked for information for training needs analysis on the needs of staff in an area to help inform future educational budgets. Another role is the corporate service training and development um, skills training programmes, which are, are more covering a whole area or a whole institution. And you might deliver in-house or ex internal or external um, training groups of learners. And if it's a large hospital trust or community trust, it might focus on certain groups. So you might run an international nurse bridging programme or an apprenticeship, be an apprenticeship lead to support trainee nursing associates and degree apprenticeships across a large employer. It could be to support healthcare assistants, develop their skills um, and or newly registered nurses on a preceptorship program. And this role is more tracking, evaluating their experiences across a whole institution. You might run safety driven study days like tracheostomy study days or basic life support or recognising acutely ill deteriorating patients as a clinical skills educator. We also have patient health advisor roles. So somebody that's a continence advisor or an addiction advisor in mental health, they would be linking, utilising their nurse educator skills. They might teach in pre on preceptorship programmes or with certain groups of staff. They're teaching patients, obviously, might go to universities and teach. And so help nurse education is part of everybody's role, really. We've all got to educate. But in sort of patient advisory roles, I would class them as nurse educators as well, because many of them do teach. And it sort of shows how the role career pathways and roles can be quite fluid across the career pathways the nurse education role comes into being a specialist nurse as well potentially a lead for clinical education across services so sort of going up a career ladder um, or career progression you have leads for education in institutions and they would be responsible for all of the educator roles in an institution they would project manage, they would be responsible for training needs analysis across a whole service, they're responsible for annual educational budgets that come from government and the allocation of those budget budgets. They may undertake scoping reviews and project work and they have to meet the targets set by government. So they work closely with government institutions. So for example, in England, it would be Health Education England. We also have joint university appointments. So my previous role as a lecturer practitioner working half at a hospital trust and half delivering um, the neuroscience master's programme and adult nursing modules was a joint appointment. And university lecturing, you could become an associate lecturer where you might work full time in a role or part time in a role, but offer a certain number of hours to become an associate lecturer. You might to do that, you give your CV to a university and you talk to the programme lead. And some universities ask you to deliver, say, 11 hours, 15 hours a semester to be called an associate lecturer. Some don't define those hours. And full time lecturing roles at university is another career option. There's also freelance nurse trainer roles or working for private companies, agencies and charities. So go out there and look at those job descriptions because there's a wide variety of nurse educator roles. Five ways to support your progression. I've got lots of tips. Increase your insight of what the role entails. Offer to support educators and develop others in your role. Promote evidence-based practice. You can see that with the role, you're looking at service delivery, acting as a role model, but maintaining standards and being research active is really helpful in that role. Complete academic courses aligned to the role. Rigorously prepare your application and interview because these roles are competitive. 
So to increase your insights and knowledge of the role, firstly, review job descriptions and personal specifications for the essential and the desirable requirements. What you don't want to happen is your ideal role to come up in an area as a, I don't know, band seven practice development nurse, and you realise that you have to have a teaching certificate to apply for that role. Informal visits and shadowing, talk to people in the role, and you can start doing that as students and early career nurses or talk to the lead recruiter. There are videos out there. The RCN's got a video. Liz Alibone um, talks about educational role within clinical practice in a nursing careers resource. And there's a day in a life videos on YouTube. Offer to support educators and develop others. So you will have a stronger personal statement if you start to do this and you can put that in your personal statement that perhaps you support educators to welcome students or you assist on teaching or training programmes. It gives you a stronger personal statement when applying for jobs, but also it helps you gain insight as to whether you want to become a nurse educator. So helping to orientate and duck new starters or students, teaching others, developing resources, teacher packs or welcome packs for students, training nursing associates, run staff, patient support groups, developing evidence-based documentation, attending conferences, acting as a link nurse. You could present at a recruitment event or act as a speaker for schools ambassador where you're talking about why you came, became a nurse. Promoting evidence-based practice, because as you can see me talking about the clinical educator role, you're maintaining those standards. And it, when you're looking at supporting line managers, if a new standard comes out nationally, you're going to be helping implement that standard in practice through your educational role. You could run a journal club, lead or collaborate with a quality improvement research project or look to publish or share your work in some way. And I have got a good video on my YouTube channel of how to um, influence practice by sharing your work and also a video on quality improvement projects or service improvement projects for nurses. You can contribute to policy development at local and national level, look at professional forums and shared governance groups, act as a link between university and practice, so attending conferences, you might want to link with the university and attend an annual review for the adult nursing program. Um, you can act as an associate lecturer if you're thinking about linking with the university. Fourthly, complete academic courses aligned to the role. So by finding out what qualifications you need, do you need to work towards a teaching certificate? Or is it an essential qualification to obtain a teaching course? And the requirements will depend on the role, whether it's a teaching certificate level or a postgraduate diploma in education or professional education, or whether you need to have a master's or be working towards a PhD. And I've just got an example here just to visually show that you've got some example roles on the left and then in the middle, some example professional development or experiences that you may see on job descriptions and aligned to some academic courses. So if you're looking at clinical nurse educator roles or practice development nurses, they may be set at band six level, for example. You would need experience in for one to two years. You need to be supervising others in practice and then an active interest demonstrated in education. And I've already given some examples how you can do that. Ideally, you start working towards a certificate in education. And then for a band seven type role, education lead, a corporate skills educator or a practice development nurse, experience might be two to three years. You might have worked previously in an education type role supervising others, but have some leadership or project management demonstrated. Um, you might have run a teaching programme or set up or led some study days. And again, academic courses, which would ideally align, would be certificate in education and start working towards a postgraduate diploma in education. Not all jobs ask for that, 
but it helps you develop your teaching skills doing these academic courses. University lecturing work, you usually require a master's. It could be any master's usually that links to public health, healthcare, leadership, or um, it could be linked to uh, medicine or physical um, health. You postgraduate diploma in education and some require PhD. And lastly, writing a strong personal statement for an application for a nurse educator role is important because the roles are so competitive and rigorously preparing for interviews. I've got some helpful videos on how to prepare a personal statement and prepare for interviews on my YouTube channel. I've got a video, an overview of post-registration nurse education in the UK to help your interview prep. And I will um, be developing an, um, a video soon on preparing for an interview for a nurse educator role, specifically for nurse educator roles. So look out for that video. It's free to subscribe on my YouTube channel. So I hope the videos, this video, give you some insight. These are the references that I mentioned. You can also contact me on Twitter, my website or Instagram and I have written a book how to prepare for interviews and develop your career and again this is, will be helpful for anybody looking at future career development and interviews for a nurse educator role.